Hello and welcome into the world of creative photography. I'm Haley, founder of Creative Photo Folk, and today I'm going to show you how to fake the look of cyanotypes using Photoshop. Cyanotypes are usually created by coating a paper surface with chemicals and then placing a photo negative or objects on top and exposing it to sunlight. The sun darkens only the exposed chemicals, turning them into a striking shade of blue, while leaving behind a white imprint in the shape of your object. As much as I'd love to try creating real cyanotypes, the problem is I don't have the required chemicals and can't justify purchasing them either because I don't see myself using them much. So instead, I found a way to mimic the effect in Photoshop. But that does mean we have to do a bit of extra work first. So firstly, we need to create some brush strokes to resemble the look of the treated cyanotype paper. To do this, I grabbed some blue water-based acrylic paint, mainly because I didn't have actual watercolour paint, and added about a teaspoon of water to thin it down. Though you don't technically need blue paint because we can easily change the colour in Photoshop later. Then I used a cheap paintbrush to paint rough brush strokes onto different textured surfaces. For some, I left brush strokes at the sides with gaps in the paint, and others I covered the whole sheet of paper. When these were dry, I put them out in direct sunlight to photograph them. My settings were 1 320th of a second, F13, and ISO 100. However, if you don't have paint, then we can also create brush strokes in Photoshop. So to get the correct document dimensions, I just grabbed a photo that I thought I might work with, and in Lightroom I went to Photo, Edit In, Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Then we're going to add a new layer over top because we're not using this one just yet, it's just for the dimensions. And we're going to fill it with white, so Edit, fill and then with contents I'm going to choose white. Okay so now we've got our bit of paper. To create our brush strokes we'll go to the brush tool which shortcut is B and it's this little guy here that looks like a brush and then up the top here where it shows you the type and size of the brush we'll click the little drop down arrow next to it and what I'm going to do in the search bar here is type the word fan because we need to find a brush that basically mimics a paintbrush. Now the one I ended up going with I think is this one flat fan high bristle count and so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna make sure that I'm painting with black so I'm gonna press D to make sure my colors are defaulted to black and white and that black is on top and then I'm just going to start kind of painting in what looks like brush strokes now being that this is Photoshop it's never going to look particularly convincing because we can never mimic a real brush and that's why I really wanted to use a real brush for this technique. So I'll just give it some little fanned edges. Now because the brush is kind of set up the same way that all the edges sort of look the same so that's where this technique fails a little bit but if you have no other option this will work for you. Next we need to photograph the objects we want to use on our surface. To find objects, I basically walked around my garden and house looking for flat, interesting foliage and items. You may want to press these in a book if they aren't quite flat. However, real cyanotypes sometimes create a shifted edge around the object where the light seeps underneath when they're not sitting flat. So we will recreate this look in Photoshop later. I place these on white card in pleasing arrangements and photograph these in direct sunlight at midday so that the objects weren't casting large shadows and neither was my body. My settings were 1 3 20th of a second, F18 and ISO 100. If you can't shoot at midday for whatever reason, just shoot in flat light. Unfortunately, it was really windy when I was shooting and my objects kept blowing all over the place. So I eventually had to use this shot box which might be another option for you if you have something similar, but absolutely isn't necessary. So in Lightroom, I'm just going to choose the two images that I want to work with. In this case, it's this image here and maybe this one here. So what I did is clicked one and then Control or Command click the second one. So they're both highlighted and then we'll go to Photo, Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. 
Now, we're just going to make sure that our brush strokes are on the bottom because that's where we want them to be. And I might just move them into position a little bit by switching off the object layer. And with my move tool, which is the shortcut V, this little icon here, I can pull that into the middle and I want to also crop out the edges. So I press Control or Command T for my transform tool and just pull this up to where I want it to be. I might go with about there. And then I'm going to crop out these other bits. So I'll press the C to load my crop tool, making sure that WH resolution is highlighted up here because otherwise we won't be able to drag to the aspect ratio that we like. So this just lets us freehand pull in edges. So that looks good. Now there was a hole in this box. So what I can do to fix that, this is where I might use some AI. So I'm just going to add a new layer with my add new layer button. I'm going to go to the remove tool, which is under the little band aid, and then make that a little bit bigger and just paint over that area and see what happens. We'll probably do. We might just crop it a little bit more. Now, switching our other layer back on, what we need to do is now put it into position. So again, I'll use my move tool just to sort of bring it into the middle. Press Control or Command T to make it as big as I want it. And maybe about there. We can always fix this later. So it's not, doesn't have to be exact right now. We'll hit tick when we're done. Now, first thing we're going to do is add a levels layer. So from your adjustment layer icon, which is the little half pie, we'll click that and add levels. And then just so it's only affecting this layer and not those brush strokes underneath, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and click between those two layers. So now this levels is only affecting this object layer. We're going to pull in the whites because we want to try and make our whites as white as we can get them and then pull in the blacks because we want our subjects to be as dark as we can get them, but without affecting that background too much. So it is a little bit of a fine game. Maybe about there is looking good. Next, we're going to highlight that object layer and we're going to press Control or Command I to invert it. So the blacks become black and the whites become white. We could at this point, if we want to keep trying to make those blacks as black as we can get them, but I'm not, I think we'll just leave it for now. Next, I'm going to highlight our object layer again. And this time we're going to add a black and white adjustment layer. So we'll go here, hit black and white, and that's going to make it black. Now we can actually play a little bit in here too with our sliders a bit more just to try and get things even blacker. Yeah, we don't want to lose subject, so just be careful when playing with certain colors. And then what I'm going to do is highlight our object layer again, and we're going to change the blend mode here from normal to screen. And now we've dropped out our background. We do still have some edges though, so that's a little bit of a problem that we can play with now. So I'll just go back to that levels layer and just play with things a little bit more. Now, I don't want to go too much because then we start to lose this object here. So I want to keep as much of that in as possible, but we still got some edges. You hopefully won't. I didn't really have this problem with any other image. So what I'm just going to do is highlight that object layer, add a layer mask, use my brush tool with B and making sure that black is loaded on my swatch. I'm just going to paint around those edges to get rid of them. Now, the cyanotypes aren't usually very sharp, so this is probably quite sharp because they are real objects. So we might just blur them up a little now. So what I'm going to do first is right click in the blank space of that layer and then hit convert to smart object. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're just going to add a little bit of a blur, not too much, say around three pixels, hit OK. The other thing I might like to play with is the opacity. I might just drag it down a little bit. Now I don't want to do that too much. It's just that sometimes that color does seep through a little bit. So um, maybe about 95%. Now we will play with the brush strokes a little bit. So we'll highlight that brush strokes layer. I'm going to add hue saturation. I'm just going to play with those blues a little bit just to see if I can get them nicer. Mine are kind of okay, but just in case yours are maybe not the blue you wanted or maybe not blue at all. So we can play with our saturation. Now, if you had, say, painted in a different color, then this is how you would change it to that sort of cyanotype blue. It's usually quite a rich blue and you might need to look at some references just so you can get it right. So let's say we go with that. We can also then add a levels adjustment layer and just play with the tones. So maybe I want it a little bit darker like this, but keep those whites still quite white. That's looking pretty good. And the other thing I'm just going to do just out of taste is go back to my object layer, press Control or Command T. And I just want to make it a little bit bigger. I just zoomed out so I could see my transform handles. 
Now, you may be happy with that, but I just want to show you how to do that little thing with the shift where the light has kind of seeped around or maybe the shadows have moved a bit. So you can see a little bit of that from the shadows that were shot at the time. To do this, we are going to grab our main object layer. We're going to make a copy of it with Control or Command J. And then we'll work on the version that we were originally working on. So we'll keep that at the top there and then we'll go to this layer here. What we're going to do first is invert that back to what it was before. We're going to change the blend mode to soft light and then bring the opacity down to about 50%. Just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command T and then we're just going to rotate that slightly to... So I'm just putting my cursor outside my transform box and it'll create this little arrow that allows you to rotate. So now we, you can see we've created this shifted edge. I don't want it to be too extreme. So about there and hit tick. Now it's not black and white anymore because when we copied it, we didn't copy that layer across. So I'm going to go to image adjustments and then black and white. I'm going to leave it at default and hit OK. And then now it has brought in that edge that was being a problem before. So going to add a levels adjustment layer. We're going to clip it with the alt or option holding between the two layers. Then I'm just going to play with this layer a little bit to see if I can get rid of those edges. So just the midtone seems to have helped. There we go. So that is before and after. So you can see that shift is now visible. It is affecting the lightness of our image, like particularly that flower. So I don't 100% love that, but I do like that it has added, added a kind of depth to the image now. And you can rotate that or move it in any direction that you like. And so here are some other examples I created using that object method. So that is the object method. Now let me show you the negative method. For this method, we're going to mimic the effect of a fake negative. So how you would do this normally is you would print a negative of your picture and then you would expose it to sun over the paper and then it creates this kind of cyanotype photograph, really. And we're going to use our fake brush strokes just for this example, but then I'll show you some ones that I created using those real brush strokes. Now, when experimenting with images for this, I found like that most kind of worked. You may come across a few that don't, but I've kind of, I've tried to use a variety of different scenarios and they all seem to have worked. So hopefully this will be the case for you. But the image we're going to work with here is that one we brought in earlier. So I'm just going to drag it up over top of those brush strokes we created. So we are going to first make it black and white like before. We'll go to black and white, flip it so it's not affecting those brush strokes. We're going to highlight that object layer and make it screen. So again, it's popping through just to the brush strokes. We might blur it a little again. So I like to make my object a smart object first in case I want to change that blur. So I just right clicked in the, the blank bit of that layer, clicked convert to smart object. Then we'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Not that much, just a little bit. So between five and six and hit okay. Now to create that blue look, we'll highlight whatever's top of our layer stuck. And I'm going to go to our, our adjustment layer icon and hit hue saturation. And the good part is in this preset section of this, of the properties, we're going to hit cyanotype. It already exists. So that has given us our blue toning. And we can experiment with that. We can make it darker. We can change that hue a little bit. Play with the lightness. Now, I don't think this looks super convincing, to be honest. And I think what the beauty of a real cyan, or even a fake real cyanotype, is that it's the texture and the different kind of mottledness in the background. So now we'll try and do something like that. So I think the best way to do that is using a texture. Now, I photograph textures all the time, usually just rocks or interesting wallpaper or just anything with texture, really. And so what am I... I'm just going to choose something totally at random. This isn't my full texture library. It's just ones I've got on my computer and they're actually probably my worst ones. But I'm going to go with something like this. So this was actually a crystal, like a large crystal that I photographed. So, so we'll go to photo, edit in Photoshop. And I'm choosing it because not only is it textured, but it's got a lot of light and dark variation, which I think is quite helpful for this. So once it's open in Photoshop, I'm just going to drag it up and over onto the image we've been working on, which is this one. And then I'll control or command T just to pop that into position. Now we'll play with that blend mode. I think the first thing we need to do is make it black and white. So normally you could add a black and white adjustment layer. I'm not going to want to stuff around with it later. So I can just go to image adjustments, black and white. And 
or just hit OK. That applies it. So it's not, you can't ever change it. It's now locked in, which is why you normally use these because it um, allows you to change them after the fact. So now let's take a look. I'm not sure this is the best texture, but let's go with something like linear light. I just really like that you can see the light and dark, and then we'll just drag down that opacity. So that now gives the image a little bit of texture. The other thing you could do if you don't have your own textures is we'll make sure we highlight that object layer. And we'll go to filter, noise, add noise. And then you can add some noise in. So we'll use Gaussian. We want monochromatic. Just makes it a little bit more random. And then you can play with your amount. Don't want to go way overboard here, but maybe 10 to 15%. So that's before, after. So. It looks okay. I just want to now show you a variation of this. I did the exact same image, but using brush strokes. So that looks like this. So you can see that that lovely texture from the paper has come through and I, it just looks to me more realistic. So that's why I wanted to do the brush stroke method and not the Photoshop method, because as you can see, it's not as cool. We can maybe bring up the exposure a little bit just to see so see what i mean but it's an option for you absolutely and just to show you a few others i created so i created this version which initially looked like that there's some flowers shot with light on a black background then there's this version and the original look like this so actually shot exactly the same way as the previous version i'm going to be showing you this technique in next month's tutorial so that's that version then this one looked originally like this. So just the night sky with some trees silhouetted. I think that looks pretty cool. So if you've always wanted to try creating cyanotypes but can't justify the cost, well, this is how to do it. Though there are so many wonderful ways to get creative with real cyanotypes. So I don't want to discourage you from trying the real thing. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you know someone who might be interested in this technique, make sure to let them know. See you next week and happy creating.